Welcome back to Force Education. This is Zed. Today I'm going to be giving another update on ITRM, HRM Therapeutics. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow, subscribe, and leave notifications on. Let's jump right into this one. So this is my second video on this one here, ITRM. If you would like to watch my previous video, you'll find it in the description below. Now, going on this one here, we do have a couple of updates recently. Uh, as well as updates on technical analysis. If you'd like to skip towards the technical analysis, it's somewhere in the second part of the video. You'll find a link to that in the description or it's uh, divided into the comments. So therapeutic, um, therapeutics here, I term therapeutics, we have a little bit of different news. For instance, they do have a presentation they're presenting up in the upcoming investor conferences. And the first one is an SVP or SVB, Lee Rank Annual Global Healthcare Conference on Thursday, February 21st, uh, 25th, 2021 at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The other one is at H.C. Hinkworth Global Life Science Conference on demand beginning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 9th, 2021. So the first one coming up is February 25th, 2021. And before moving on forward and try to basically speculate on what goes on next, what's the next uh, PR, especially if, if there's anything going to be announced on the 25th, we're going to go back to their presentation and see what could be possible uh on terms of new news releases they might actually introduce through that conference, for instance. Now, also another one here is uh, they had announced announcing that they're underwriting options to purchase additional shares. Somewhat as well, the latest news is that they uh, this one here is not applicable to this one just because they haven't been the ones that are joining the Acromobil, uh groups. So that was actually a mistake, but. So we have the, the announcement of the exercise for underwrite is optional to purchase additional ordinary shares that will be for capital. And uh, this will have as well around $42.1 million net proceeds going to their cash. That's already gone through, but there's a bit more of additional shares that can be exercised around 5.2 uh, million shares. Uh, if you were to do the math there, you're probably looking somewhere around 5 million shares additional. Or sorry, $5 million net proceeds if it was to actually uh, get exercised. And then the next thing is a bit of their presentation. We need to look if there's any kind of PR that we might actually get ahead uh, and expect anything coming up. I've gone through this in my last video, so I think there is actually one of the things I want to show is this, the UUTI. This one here is FDA EMA primary endpoint, cure 12 days. Uh, QUTI, that's the FDA EMA primary endpoint, cure at 20, day 21. CIAI. Uh, the FDA EMA primary endpoint met cure at day 28 for clinical success and 21 for clinical success with an IA margin of 12.5. And we have just around here some of the, the possible news we might get in the first half of 2021. Already have the NDA acceptance here and this uh, for the Salopinum. Potentially advisory committee. It all could just be any of these here too, perhaps, regarding their main uh, product. And around here, uh, we see potential U.S. approval that we already have. Um, no, actually, maybe the U.S. data exclusivity and the European data exclusivity. Perhaps we might get something in terms of that update. And the advisory committee for the second half 2021 that's still ahead. We already received NDA filing, so I don't think that's going to be one of the PRs we get. I think it's going to be an updated perspective into the company, especially with their recent cash uh, and which can easily be gone towards raising more capital. And we will go ahead and double check uh, regarding a bit on how much debt they have on hand. So if we were to go to financials here, we go to balance sheet, we go to quarterly. And quarterly right there. So just alone, the last one we have was around 42 million, right? There on the, on September, um, their total debt was around 40 million. So that means technically they can easily be debt free. Now that is just one offering that they've gone through. We can double check and see other offerings. For instance, you had an announcement of 10 million do million dollar bought deal public offering for ordinary shares, um, and then you go back a little bit further. Um, by the way, this this they did have, uh, oh, there you go, $17.5 million. So yeah, technically they easily are debt free. They can just pay it off or if they're just hoarding some cash, I'm um, still not exactly clear about that. We'll get to hear about it on February 25th uh, or hopefully that is the case. So they do have until March 23rd to meet uh, the, the minimum bid price. So that is something to look at. Um, 
double checking here um the company continuous under the simple itrm and what they're looking for is that they did not find one dollar and we'll count towards that and see if they actually meet compliance currently i don't think i've seen a pr like that uh anytime rec any recently but they are a dollar institutional buyers seem to be a bit more bullish than bearish morgan stanley added seven sixteen thousand shares said our investment 15 although two sigma wedbush has been uh selling out so here's the thing some who've been holding for a while have been cashing after institutional buyers such as the royal bank of canada and some are buying and it is that dynamic but the good thing about this one is in february we have all these institutional buyers compared to previously these ones here so institutional activity has increased substantially in 2021 so that's a good thing in my book insiders on the 12th of february denver alexander sold somewhere around 20 million shares now of course he did also do a conversion for exercise so it's not something he bought it was more of an exercise um and there was that thing going there um and i'm not sure how i feel about that they've been selling a lot of shares in there and i guess a lot of these companies have been holding for a while especially pharmaceuticals they want to cash out and i get it now before moving on forward please make sure to subscribe and leave notifications on it helps my channel a lot more than you can think and if you'd like to join our discord feel free to do so it's in the description below and now coming on towards the technical analysis on the one week perspective things on the moving averages are ten are starting to look bullish and that's a good thing this is the first week we're looking at it bullish adx shows there is still another leg up for this one million percent r is showing there is potential for growth here macd is showing that it's still bullish a little bit retracted and accumulating and momentum looks good now on a one day perspective what we get to see on three months one day there we go it's loading up and what we get to see is things are looking bullish the trading action zone where positive reversals are likely and by the way i'm saying bullish on the moving averages it's between 209 and 170 so that is your trading action zone that's where positive reversals are likely your 50 sma has crossed the 200 sma and that's a bullish thing it's called the golden cross and that's usually a gold uh, a bullish indicator adx here you get to see it still has some room to grow uh, momentum is looking stable although the macd is attempting a negative reversal so next week is key for the next few days we don't want a red day but you get to see it's retracting and if it does go negative we might actually see an accumulation period similar to this one i'll get towards uh the compliance in a second now on a two hour perspective we just did one hour there we go two hour you get to see things are really sloppy it's more of an accumulation phase. ADX shows sloppy. William Percent R shows neutral. MACD sloppy. Momentum is almost at zero. And moving averages are all still on a horizontal line. So it's sloppy accumulation all throughout. Now, again, towards that uh, compliance. So we're looking for 10 days above a dollar. And what we're looking at here, this is the dollar line. It definitely reached compliance. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the list goes on. They have compliance. You don't need to worry about a reverse split in this uh, range here. Now, on the moving average band, it's expected to trade 199 on the top, 188 in the middle, and 163 in the bottom. Previously, once it hits the bottom, it usually bounces back up, or at least in the half level, so around 181. It also has history of really just using that 199 or the top moving average band as its own support so key levels to look at right now is 199 181 and 163 and it looks like uh the stronger one is probably the 181 uh where you can probably see a new support there stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both showing be careful it's in an accumulation phase it didn't say a pullback it just said more of an accumulation phase the fibonacci retracement shows significant support at the 204 173 143 and the 106 significant resistance at 247 and the 301 level and now we can go ahead and just draw a bit of price line actions actually i'm going to do it right on here first and some of the price line actions we're looking at significant support sits at the 201 below there you're looking at 193 below there you're looking at 181 174 156 139 130 118 you're looking down at 107 99 cents 88 cents 77 cents 60 cents 54 significant resistances for this we're going to go back to this one here just because i can get to see a bit more points coming up 229 above there you're looking at 239 above there you're looking at 256 and then 279 302 now i can go all the way back and start 
plotting in some important resistance lines. So we're looking at 289. That's an important one. 322. 380. And we're looking at the 441. 492, 605, 693, and then 750. So we get a bit of an idea on what's going on here. Now, the next question is if we see any current patterns that are looking up. So in terms of patterns, things are looking a little bit weird because you do have this accumulation line, right? So we can draw a price line, a uh, trend line here. Your trend that is somewhere around here, it's still withholding. So you have a trend line that is looking upwards, a little bit of a lower uh, kind of uh, accuracy, but it's still a trend over there. You also got uh, perhaps this a little bit of a triangle going on that has been broken a little bit to the top. So you can say, well, it's actually, you know, on route for a breakout. So that's possible. But again, you have two supports. You have that kind of two bucks line over there and you got the trend line going upwards and they're both a positive trend now i can go ahead and say well this is actually heads and shoulder but it's actually accumulating rather than falling so that's interesting the so two bullish one bearish what do you think about the sticker now i for myself i think that we're probably going to see an accumulation zone above that dollar 81 to two dollar level and then we might actually see it further on for uh a further push now for pharmaceuticals they will dilute they will continue on but it looks like that wasn't a that wasn't a problem for the market generally and i myself i think this is a little bit of a risky trade but if they actually go through with their uh back sorry with their with their uh, therapeutics and i did go through the details of what they are in the last video i think if they pull it off i think that you might actually see a little bit even of higher market cap but generally speaking it's a high risk with a moderate reward result. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. You have a wonderful day.